Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Wooly Thistle Shopcast. I'm your host Corinne and my co-host Maggie here and we run the Wooly Thistle which is an online yarn shop that specializes in woolly wools, mm -hmm. mostly non-superwash and things very close to the sheep in the land and we love everything don't we yes yes we do <laughs> so if you're new here welcome and thanks for checking us out if you are returning thank you so much for coming back we do appreciate you and we love your comments and keep that coming because that will cheer anyone up on any day mm -hmm. yeah so thank you for that we appreciate how how much you enjoy the shopcast and the yarns we have here at the woolly thistle so um just to mention we're no longer running ads on new videos uh we are sponsoring these videos now so that you don't have to deal with watching ads which can be really really annoying mm -hmm. so this is an ad free zone and we just ask that you support us in any way you can that might be just watching leaving a comment um sharing sharing yes definitely we want to grow our youtube here I think we've got just over 16,000 subscribers which is amazing and we want to keep that growing. Um, you can also uh, join our Facebook group Maggie, yeah. uh, Ravelry group, what else do we have? Oh our email list, things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. support us that way or come shop, that is great too definitely. And um, we now have a PIPS program, Yeah. which I don't know that we've talked about here, we might have before i don't remember. it's fairly new mm -hmm. uh sorry i'm just getting all the housekeeping yeah the that's way. okay <laughs> start with the housekeeping okay housekeeping so pips is what we call points in progress it's a loyalty program so now you get pips when you uh shop with us or share something or it's all it's all outlined in the shop website you can just click on the little icon that's on the page and it'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, and we're really excited about it. We're seeing people take advantage of it, growing their pips, cashing their pips in when they're shopping. It's yeah. really good. And, and your pips are worth uh, money off your next order. Exactly. So, so you are basically building up to money off, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. One thing I am thinking though that we haven't asked for a while is if you would like to have a guest spot here on the episode, uh, the Shopcast, send us a video of you showing us your whips or or fo's we would love that we've we've done a few mm -hmm. and we would love to keep that going too so if you have you know if you want to test out what it's like to be on a podcast before you start your own or if you just want to share your excitement for what you are knitting we love that and we want to give you a boost and get you on our shopcast so yeah there's instructions for that on the shop there are instructions for that in the shop there's a form that you can fill out um and a place where you can submit your video if you can't find it um you can just always email us at info at the woolly thistle yeah. and let us know that you're interested and we will be happily chat with you and get you all the yeah. information you need yeah yeah yeah, new stars, mm -hmm. new stars. Absolutely, yeah. especially if you're in any of our groups you've seen, there are a lot of stars out there, so many talented knitters. It's true, um, and we love we love it. Um, you know, our community is pretty darn special. Even as it's growing, yeah. there is uh, just, there's just happiness to be knitting and sharing our whips and FOs and knitting along together and all those good things. Yeah. So yes, um, okay, Maggie, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, what's I'm new with you? Good. Um, I am the proud mom of a new graduate. Oh. Um, like many of our listeners, I've been on Instagram. It's that time of year, and I've seen a number of our community members yes. who've also been attending graduation. Yes, so congratulations to yes. you all and your children. Definitely. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm this is my first day back after a three day weekend because yeah. I helped with our town does a project grad. Um, and I was thrilled for the high school to, for the high school um, to give the graduates a fun place to go on yeah. graduation evening, and so I was there till about uh, two fifteen in the morning. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! That's, on, on Thursday that's night, vacation. so when I tallied it up, I'm like, oh, I was up for like nineteen and a half hours or something, and it has been many years since that was the case, and I really felt it on Friday. By Friday at like uh, one o'clock, I was like, oh, uh huh. Yeah, I was just really done. And your son had a great time. He had a fabulous time. All the kids had a great time. Good. Um, and yeah, yeah. My son actually graduates eighth grade uh, the day this goes live, nice. so I'll be there doing that tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. I think he's ready for high school. You know. Yeah. It's time. We have a very small uh, elementary school that goes K through eight, and by the time they're finished eighth grade, they're sick of the sight of each other. 
um, or at least that's what I think. Uh, he doesn't actually express that, but yeah, I think they're ready for. I went to a really small uh, grade school, yeah, and middle school, and it was it was bittersweet. Like we, were, I was certainly ready to like go to the big world where yeah. more was offered, but at the same time, yeah. Well, well, you know, oh, there's so many people. Like I don't know everybody. <laughs> exactly. You know, in Scotland, uh, you you go, you start high school at age twelve. Oh wow. So here it's fourteen, right? Yeah. And uh, so I suppose sort of I don't know. You you really only go for four years, so you you and you, there, I, I don't know what it's like now, but there's no graduation. You just finish after fourth year, or you can stay on for fifth year or sixth year if you're going to university, that sort of thing. Okay. But most people, at least when I was there, was uh, leaving after fourth year, which means you're 16 and you're going out into the work world. And that's what most people did yeah. and do. And I just heard that Nicola Sturgeon has been arrested. She was the leader of, uh, of, of um, I don't know if she was in the I don't know if she was in the opposition or I I can't remember, but she's a big name in Scotland. She's just been arrested, I heard this morning on the news, which is bananas. Terrible. Anyway, off we go. So what do we have in this episode today? I'm feeling squirrely. Um, we have we have some sneak peeks of things that are coming very yeah. soon. Um, should we tell them too that this is for June? This is going to be our last episode for June. I'm going to stop Just laughing. for June. <laughs> yes, stop clapping. Um, this is going to be our last episode for June. We're taking a couple weeks off. It's um, the summertime. It's the summertime and um, I have a very busy June. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to get through that um, yeah. and then we'll be back in July with lots of big things because July is our birthday. Oh yes. So we'll be back with lots of fun things in July. Yes. Um, so you'll see some sneak peeks of some of those today. And um, we also have segments from Kelsey, Emma, and some knitting yoga with Kim. Yes, and I so. watched Kim's knitting yoga last night, and I did it, and it's fantastic. Wonderful. It's all for your shoulders, which uh, I have been feeling very tight in, so it's perfect. Oh, yeah, Kim's, Kim's so good at the yoga. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a yogi. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. Do you want to announce our first winner? And sure. if you're new here, we always announce two winners uh, from the comments below. So go ahead, Maggie. Um, our first winner is Jennifer Maitreya. Um, and Jennifer says, I love the traditions you are bringing to us with the annual cows and opportunities for purchasing. It is wonderful. I also love all of your yarn. You are my favorite yarn shop. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jennifer, you are a winner of a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. If you can send us an email with prize winner in all caps to info at the Woolly Thistle. Um, we will get you your $25 gift card. Yes, and if you want to be in the running, just leave a comment below on this episode. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And you too could be selected at random uh, from all the comments. Yeah. And thank you to Caitlin who does that for us. Absolutely. Yes. So are you wearing anything, Lily? I am not. It is no. that time of year. I've yeah. got on our notes. What are you wearing? Well, you're wearing your shawl. I have thrown my shawl on because it's a little chilly. It's going to be like 80 degrees. I later, know. But I'm wearing my shawl now. I am not wearing anything. But let me tell you, I was knitting in public on Sunday. Nice. Not so much on Saturday, the day itself. But I was at a soccer game for my son. Mm -hmm. Sitting in very hot, blazing sun with my Dunrobin in my lap. Feverishly knitting away with sweaty <laughs> hands. <laughs> I think everyone thought I was bananas. I, I might agree with them, but I'm almost finished, so. There we go. That's yeah. exciting. I'll show you when we get there. I have been thinking, like, this weekend, um, I was at, I had a church event on Saturday, and it was freezing. In the I was, church? Or I was, yes, I was absolutely freezing. Um, because, like most buildings inside right now, we are not turning on the heat. It's just No. Um, so it was just a little it's just chilly. just cold. And I had a sweatshirt on, um, but there was a woman, in, like, two rows in front of me who just had a lightweight sweater on, and the texture of it, I'm sure it was just a store-bought sweater, but the texture of it looked very um it looked a lot like sauna and oh. it had me thinking like ooh, because i'm often grabbing for this store-bought cardi right now yeah um lightweight and thin yeah and i'm like you know maybe that's what i need is a lightweight summer cardigan oh yeah because i would totally wear that a lot yeah if you don't know what sauna is it's a new release from wool dreamers mm -hmm. and it's a 50 50 cotton yeah. wool blend and it's lovely we do, do we have, have it yeah it's a basket the basket up there okay there we go it's lovely and yes mm -hmm. it would make a lovely it little really cardigan like what you're wearing yeah. yeah and i think like i'm trying to think of like what do i actually wear in my wardrobe mm -hmm. um yeah and i'm trying to slowly just replace those yeah. pieces with hand knit pieces yeah um, i think um i also wanted to mention that sauna which got a lovely label mm -hmm. this is from spain 
50-50 wool and cotton. It's got a lovely woolly feel to it and it it's got that sort of pebbly feel that I really yeah. like. Um but the Violet Tea by Jessica McDonald, mm -hmm. we were suggesting this. Yeah. Um, and I think three balls will do it for most sizes, yeah. maybe four. Um, That's the nice thing about fingering weight, too, is that you don't need that many balls mm -hmm. of yarn. Yeah. These are 50 age. grams, and mm -hmm. you get 240 yards in there. So, yeah, th this is lovely. And it does come in a lot of natural shades. And then these, uh, the blue and the green, which is very sweet. Yeah yeah so um it's not a cardigan it's a little tea but right. actually wearing a little tea would be nice as yeah. well mm -hmm. there's a lot of them out there that you can there are there are yeah a lot of, so i might be on the hunt for a pretty pattern so yeah we have this uh it's been selling like little baby hotcakes mm -hmm. and uh but, beautiful we, but we did get a lot in so mm -hmm. we still have yeah stuff if you want um sorry that was rather yeah. impromptu yeah no that's okay um it was just what i'd been thinking about yeah sometimes so, so do, you, do you think you're going to cast on something for that have you thought? soon i've got a couple things lined up that i'm like i really want to get these things done and moving so yeah. i'm trying to resist casting on another <laughs> sweater i really want to knit my oldest a cardigan before she goes back Aww. to school yeah um which will be be me knitting with worsted weight wool in right. august once right. again yeah yeah last last i think last you gotta august, do what you gotta do last august i cast on a let lopi sweater <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> in august yeah. it's bananas I yeah know. and but you know that that sounds and it though. was delightful <laughs> yeah you enjoyed it i think right? i started with the sleeves and it was fine yes actually that is a really good strategy if you're knitting something where you can knit the sleeves bottom up that's what you take out and about mm -hmm. it's like your lightweight knitting and it, it could be in let yeah. lopi and, and, and our house stays pretty cool, so if as long as I was in the house, um, it really wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. What which sweater was it? That? Was my Radari. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. Nice. And that got a lot of wear this winter. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Well, that's the thing, you know. If you want something for the winter and you haven't knit it last winter, you're gonna have to knit it in the spring or summer or fall or something. Mm -hmm. So knitters are gonna knit, and yeah. we're we're all knitters for the capital K, which means we're daily knitters, and doesn't matter what the weather's doing. That's right. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for your encouragement and comments about the loom purchase. <laughs> And the weaving, um, fantastic, really appreciate it. I'm excited to get going. I did not get a chance this weekend to start and I really wanna start when I can finish right. the warping because I don't wanna confuse myself any more than I'm likely to be confused. Also, <laughs> I brought it in and it's, it's in the space uh, next to, it's sort of like a nook next to the kitchen and it takes up about half the nook. It's much, much bigger than I thought. <laughs> So I I have been clearing out my bedroom, which is quite large, and I've got a space for it there. But that means I've got to take it all apart again and then get my son, who's not the most coordinated guy, carefully help me move it out of the house, down the driveway and back in. My okay. bedroom has uh, big swing open doors, oh, nice. which is nice, and get it in there. And then I think it won't take over the house quite quite as as obnoxiously as it currently is you know i think my kids are offended um that such a large <laughs> piece of equipment that looks very strange yeah and i, I you know i mean yeah. fine but i also kind yeah. of agree if i want to have a couch and a bookcase then um it's got to go then it's got to go mm -hmm. so but thank you keep it coming i'm excited to get going i just got to get it moved and i got to figure out when i can get that done and i i really kind of i just put it all together <laughs> And now I'm like, uh, I gotta take it all apart again. Yeah. So, and it's it's a big job, but we'll get there. Um, Maggie, should we talk about what we're knitting right now? Yeah. What are you knitting on? I have um here. I'm, I'll move it. So I have the I finished the body in my Paul Clay sweater. Mmm, it's beautiful. Oh, you finished so, it. So I finished the body. There oh, we go. And yay. I've got my my sleeve on shorties. And, and you I'm like these shorties. On. I love the oh shorties. God, what size are you knitting this on? Um, so the the body of the sweater is on a size three. Okay. I think three or four. I think three. All right. And the sleeves the same. Know. Yeah. So the the you you she has you change needles like the ribbing you go down, um, and then you go up for the color work yoke, which I did. This time? This time I did, and it worked great. <laughs> um, and then you go to like a mid-sized yeah. needle for the, the body. Yeah. Um, have you blocked any of this yet? I have not blocked any it's of it yet, good. which is why it's still like a little no, but it, tuckery it's, it's off the It's actually looking really good. 
Yeah, it'll really, I learned from the first yoke mm -hmm. um, that it will flatten out yeah. um, and smooth out and spread yeah. a little bit. It's so. so beautiful. The colors are, it's like a kaleidoscope. It's like those things that you used to look through and see mm -hmm. all the different colors. Yeah. That's what that it's, is. It's really pretty. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, so this has been great too because the past few weeks have just been busy and yeah. so zoom zoom. Yeah, just, just I don't have to say any shaping. Nope. No straight. Okay. Just Fantastic. Straight. So I measured about how long I want it. I think I'm on track. I haven't tried it on yet. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it looks great. I held it, it up. Great. It was fine. Yeah. Um, so I good. think it'll be it'll be good. And the sleeves won't take too long. Full length sleeves, though. Yeah, I'll definitely do full length sleeves, yeah. and I'll wear that more. Yeah. Um, as someone who's always chilly, I'll just wear. It I love long sleeves. I actually even like them a wee bit longer, and then folding them back, and mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's that. I've been working on that. But show them how much of your cone is left after so, knitting a sweater. I mean, you still got sleeves to do. Yes, still but quite a, a bit of the cone. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a lot, oh. which is good because um, for those of you who've been watching, I have a second yoke <laughs> um, and I will knit the smaller size for my youngest daughter. Yeah. Who is 13. So, yes. Perfect. Um, so she was very excited. She's, she's not a woolly kid either. So the fact that she was like, yeah, I would wear that. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. It, it's so, a, I'm, I'm hoping that she'll, she, I think too, my sister for Christmas bought her like a store-bought sweater, which... Um, she's, she's worn a lot. Good. Um, much to my surprise. Yeah. It is very soft. So sort of like, like a gateway sweater. sweater and so I, I think that it's made her realize like, oh, yeah. maybe I could wear sweaters. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have to make sure she has like a nice shirt for underneath. Yeah. It so she's not itchy because she is. She's sensitive. a little itchy, a little sensitive yeah. soul. very sensitive. Bless her heart. Um, and then I do have one other little most. Finished? No, you have it. Oh, we're not doing FOS right now, are we? Oh, no, it is finished. Well, she still needs her dress. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so How much. adorable. She's so, I know. she's so cute. She's so cute. So this is the Nana Duck pattern from Mush and Friends. Um, Which is the book just... from... We don't have it. It's down there. Mush and Friends. Seamless toys and to knit and love. There you yeah, go. It's just it's so good. Yeah. Um, so the the pattern does have a little dress. Um, I have the yarn pulled out. I've just I, I need to be like awake and enough to focus because it'll go step by step. Oh my god, look at the raccoon. I know. Adorable. Are you going to knit any more after this? Oh, yeah. you, you've enjoyed knitting it. I have enjoyed knitting it. Um, it's just really genius. <laughs> I've knit a lot of toys. Um, and the way that she moved seamlessly from the adorbs. From the, you start with the tip of the beak and then you really just build her on down. And she's lovely. She's she, absolutely lovely. Uh, very clear instructions. Lots yes. of fun. The yes. kids have been making fun of how big I stuffed her butt. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. But yeah, I, lo I love it so much. She's yeah. so cute. Yeah, my well old, done. My oldest was funny. She was like, why did you knit a duck? <laughs> I'm like, why not, not knit? understand your question. Why not knit a duck? Right, right. Yeah. I had a pattern. I had to knit the So duck. you're going to knit the dress that she has, which is a sideways looking dress? Yeah. So I've knit, um, I knit my duck with JNS two ply um, and the dress. So I've pulled out some colors of JNS yeah. two ply. Probably Fun. not quite as many colors as she has, but I'll do the striping. Dress yeah. It'll be so cute. So cute. So that's, gorgeous. That's what I've been well done, to. you. Well Thank done, you. you. friends. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned a minute ago, I was knitting on my Dun Robin, nice. which we're going to be launching early July. Mm -hmm. So watch out for that. There'll be details in our newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a course and we'll have kits. And so, of course, this is the Dun Robin Inlet Lopi here, mm -hmm. which uh, is very nice. And this then nice. my um, Dun Robin in uh, Studio Donegal Irish Heathers. And I love this purple colorway. It's so pretty. Yeah, all the colors are good though. They're mm -hmm. all they're all quite dark, but great base, you know, mm -hmm. colors. Um, and I love the one I did in charcoal as well. But um, this is this. I did this as a test knit. Everything's finished up with the test knitting. And yeah, hard to show you. It's a big sweater, but I finished one sleeve. And the sleeves are so fast because you're literally starting it here on your arm and down. Nice. And I just finished the other sleeve last night while watching The Crown. I finally succumbed. Finally succumbed, huh? Mm, I started on... <laughs> I started that on... face. <laughs> you have started watching. I have. 
I, out of sheer desperation for something to watch. I'm like, I need something. And I started on season four because that's, you know, where Diana gets introduced. And that was my formative years living in the UK. I really enjoyed the earlier years where I've actually dropped off have been some of the newer seasons. Oh, really? I need to get back into it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I grew up in Margaret Thatcher's Britain and it was tough. There was no work and kids like me leaving school were th sort of shoved into these youth training schemes, which basically paid you nothing to be the skivvy. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, very, it was tough times. Um, and watching Margaret Thatcher played by Gillian Anderson, mm -hmm. she is excellent. She's got her down. Yeah. I actually find strangely uh, Margaret quite endearing the way uh, she's playing her which is going against everything in my fiber. <laughs> yeah. But um, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic show. I mean, thoroughly engrossing. Yeah. So I might go back and watch the older ones, but... Um, in the older ones, um, there was an episode that was about Prince Philip's formative years. Mm -hmm. um, and it made me... And then you see Charles going off to the same school and it made me really sort of like emotional and feel bad for them. And then uh, move forward a couple of seasons... Um, mm. And you see Charles and Diana, and I'm like, I hate him. <laughs> you hate Charles, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm swinging both. Like, I think the actor really... playing Charles has got him oh, yeah. really, really yeah. well, and and the the girl playing Diana, excellent. Yeah. I mean, just really it's good. Really well done. Really well done. I even noticed. <laughs> you probably all have seen this, but <laughs> there was there was one scene where they were just in the palace, and the queen was hanging out, and and this little mouse goes squeaking across the floor. Like, of course they have mice. It's a massive. Yeah. Anyway, really well done. And yeah. all the all the uh, the outfits. I remember seeing that on the news. They're using real news uh, anchor voices. I remember. You know, I just remember so yeah. much. It's very well done. Yeah. I mean, my aunt and uncle actually. We had a party when they got married, and we had a cake, and we all, you know, had champagne. Although I was like maybe twelve or thirteen. Um, I didn't have champagne, but they all did, you know, like, so very much, yeah. um, supportive, uh, country behind them. It's just, it's awful to see what it was like for all of them. I mean, yeah. really, uh, anywho, enjoyable watching. And I got through uh, a couple of sleeves. You have good TV watching while you're knitting. I know, I know, I know. So that's good TV for sure. I love the episode where the guy, the regular guy who's on the dole, um, unemployment goes and sits on her bed. Oh. I remembered that. I remember that being in the news. And that was just, that was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Anywho. Right. So I'm knitting on this. I just have to do, I'm actually doing the cuff off the sleeve and that's it. Then I just need to weave in ends and block it. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of that on the course as well. That's the only, Great. I might as well include the blocking in case anybody's curious and mm -hmm. concerned but the course is recorded now so it's just uh being edited wonderful and i know that josh is getting ready with all the yarn for studio donegal mm -hmm. for let lopi and rama vams yeah because uh, emma has knitted um a test knit in rama vams and it comes out excellently yeah and good gauge for the pattern so we'll be offering kits in that too yeah so go ahead and mark your calendars for july 7th if this at all interests you it will be uh releasing on july 7th very excited about that glad to see this all come to fruition it's been quite the journey yeah but a very uh wearable sweater that you will wear a ton and you can dress it up and dress it down i have been mm -hmm. uh, all through the seasons so. and if you want a friendly reminder just get on our email list and mm -hmm. we will happily remind you that unraveling is will... releasing on the 7th yes all right so yeah. that's what i've been knitting on um i'm still knitting on my um shawl for the shawl cow but it doesn't seem to grow much it's just you know <laughs> some of those when the rows get a bit longer yeah, yeah it, does, it takes time but that's yeah. okay yeah, I'm going to keep on it. I'm really, really enjoying it. In fact, I'm very sort of lace curious at the moment. Um, did you see Berlin Yarns? Is it Marum? Mm -hmm. Shawl? It's lovely. It really it's a very lovely. simple lace design, but and I think it's more a, you know, a stole than a shaped shawl. Mm -hmm. But we're doing kits for that. Um, yeah. Right, so Berlin Yarns, you must know, if you don't know Berlin Yarns, um, they are... A tiny croft on the island of Bernaray in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. Meg there is an artist and a, a shepherdess, a crofter, and she has sheep this color. They're Hebridean sheep. This is a very almost black, dark, bitter chocolate color. This is natural. 
and I love it. Look how dark yeah, that's gotten. I know. It's their peaty brown. That's peaty brown because they have a lot of peat in the soil, and I'm sure that, you know, um, helps color things that the sheep are eating. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yes, and then she has bog cotton, which is 100% cheviot which is a beautiful cream. Yeah. And then when she mixes them together, you get various grays, which we don't have here. We might be out of stock. And then she has some dyed stuff uh, as well. So this is, um, this will be a mix of peaty brown and uh, bog cotton. So a mix of Hebridean and Cheviot, and then over dyed. Um, this color here, t -t 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 moss right on the front. She has a lovely label. Mm-hmm to get it to i like to you'll notice her logo is a little boat and that is because her sheep are seafaring yes yeah, so she lives right on the coast on an island and then in the summertime the sheep get a little boat ride out to smaller islands where they spend the whole summer yeah. and then they get brought back in we do have a video on our youtube channel which we can link here if you want to watch and see a little bit more of uh, just a little highlight of meg and her um, yes amazing sheep yes this is pine so we do have kits for marum. I think it's only three balls. Yeah. Um, and you get um, a tote bag as well. This color here is dulse, which is beautiful. Yeah. And, then so, and then you would buy the pattern directly from the designer. Yeah. And this is uh, corn marigold, a nice sort of greeny, grello, goldy color. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, so um, Berlin Yarns talk about provenance and just really close to the ground, close to the sea are these and uh yeah so the marum shawl i think i would love to cast that on myself nice yeah i like knitting with berlin yarns i knitted my oh my gosh that big hat um your bell braid hat, bell braid hat. i knit that in the pd brown yeah a couple of years there's back. a new vest too it has like a a, a slightly turtleneck um mm -hmm. with it's just a sleeveless vest yep texture. no color work it, it's a little texture yeah a lovely textured pattern i think it's by lotta lofgren um yes and it features berlin yeah. that is coming out soon right we're gonna have i think so or is it yeah. out it might be out by the time you see this but yeah. we can definitely support that pattern with yarn as well mm -hmm. yeah yes okay what else do we have going on i here? think now's a good time to go over to yeah. emma <laughs> um yeah emma's sharing um all her project or Quite a few of her projects lately so mm -hmm. why don't we go chat with emma yeah it's um, hot down in maryland i think it is hot down yeah in maryland, but yeah. She, she you know she is knitting so mm -hmm. all right uh, we'll see you when we come back from emma hi everyone my name is emma and i'm coming to you as i do every month from baltimore maryland and today it's uh, pretty warm <laughs> the uh air quality has been really bad the last few days because of the forest fires in canada um so but it's improving, so that's nice. Um, can finally go outside without a mask um, again, so that's exciting. Um, and I am, yeah, I've got I've got a few things to share. Um, I don't have any FOs, but I have uh, some whips and some things I want to talk about with whips. And also, I have a project that I'm gonna cast on sometime this summer that I'm gonna share with you. That's very woolly and fun. So, um. I'm sure that many of you have experienced this kind of thing in parts of your life as a knitter or a maker, um, but I'm really going through one of those times where it's just like, there's a lot of whips. And I kind of tried to start 2023 with fewer whips and like the idea was to keep fewer whips on the needles and just kind of work through just a few, but like all great plans. It, you know, only worked for five minutes and I cast on tons of things. And not every knitter is someone who has lots of projects on their needles all the time. Um, lots of knitters are like monogamous or they have a couple projects or two or three, but they don't really exceed that. But I frequently have like 10 to 15 um, just because of who I am, because I get excited about lots of stuff and because I'm a fast knitter and I can make decent progress on one thing kind of in a day or two and then kind of put it aside and then come back to it. Um, but also because if I have that many whips, there's always different things to knit. Like there's vanilla knitting, there's sweater knitting, there's some kind of accessory, there's fair aisle, there's a, you know, maybe there's a cables, there's lace, you know, you've got a variety of stuff um, to pick from. And when you get home from work, it's like, well, today I want to knit this and I, I'm feeling that. So and I've got one, so I can work on that. Um, you know, I always have socks on the needles because they're portable. Um, so yeah, 
I've got a lot of stuff going on and I, it's, there's just like too much going on in my life to kind of handle this number of whips, like emotionally right now, <laughs> which I'm sure many of you can relate to. So I've just decided, okay, summer, we're going to finish the whips. Maybe I won't finish all of them, but you know, I'm not going to like restrict myself to not casting anything on because then it just feels like a chore. Um, I have a couple of things I'm going to, I'm going to cast on, but they're small and um, I'll get to it. But um, yeah, I've got a bunch of things that are like half done and such mostly about half done. So nothing is like in really early stages, but oh, except for the shawl that I started for the shawl cow, which I'll get to that too. Um, it's not winter yet. Winter is coming, but not for a long time. So I'll get to it. Um, but so I'm going to show it, uh, show you the first few things I'm going to try and kind of knock out and I will talk about my socks and stuff like that. So um, not all of this is wooly wool, but um, you know, we've all got lots of stuff on our needles. So this is one thing. It's a sweater that is truly almost done. It's just knitted with like a soft yarn. Oh, the stitch marker came out. I should probably deal with that. Um, and I am, um, I think it's drops air, but anyway, the f one sleeve is like here. It's almost done. There's a yarn ball inside the sleeve, which is why it's huge. And then this sleeve is in progress. <laughs> um, and can be done soon and then I will finish off the body with the remainder of the yarn. Um, but I kind of hadn't figured out how, and it has a turtleneck. This is the um, Turtle Dove 2 by Espas Trico. You could totally knit, this is a free pattern, you could totally knit this in like, um, oh, you know what would be nice is like uh, Rama Vams. Oh, it's such a nice yarn. Or like Studio Donegal. It's just a, a, a very boxy turtleneck raglan. The pattern again is free on Ravelry. Um, yeah, I haven't figured out how to finish off the sleeves because I'm not sure if I want them to be wide with a little tiny bit of twisted rib, but just to finish it off so it doesn't curl or if I want them to come in at the wrist. So I've been procrastinating, um, which is probably why I haven't finished this. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the first thing I want to finish and I'm pretty sure I could knock this out in like a couple days, just need to like actually do it. <laughs> and this is a very vanilla project, so I'm kind of waiting to do it on like a longer car ride or something. Um, but yeah, eventually I'll get, I will hopefully get to this shortly again. Where did that stitch marker go? Of course the stitch marker fell out and now I just can't even find it. <laughs> I don't think it matters that much. It was supposed to go here and I know that that's the end of the round. So we're fine. Um, but yeah, this is, this is something and I, you know, I'm not going to wear this until like November probably because it's so warm here, but it will be nice to just kind of have it done <laughs> and not just sitting on my chair. Um, and they're next to my chair. I have a knitting chair. It's like a big bargain lounger and all my projects that I'm actively working on are right next to the chair so I can reach them. <laughs> um, so another thing that I'm working on is this is actually was a finished sweater, but then I decided it, the sleeves weren't long enough. Um, so has this ever happened to you? I mean, like a lot of people have issues with sleeves after they've knit them, like where they're just kind of, um, like something is wrong and you know, whatever that is. Um, my friend Monica, who's like my best knitting friend in Baltimore, she always, she's been knitting her sleeves too narrow. Um, and she's like had like three sweaters in a row happen to be too narrow and maybe four now. And she's had to rip them out, sleeves out and re-knit them. And she's like, I should know this, but I don't like, you know, something is just like, you kind of have to wear the sweater a couple times and be like, okay, this is wrong. Let me fix it. Nice thing about knitting is that we can rip it out unless we've steaked something and then we kind of can't really go back and fix it. But if it hasn't been steeped, it's okay. So this is just a sweater that I made um, last summer of, um, this is this is yarn from a farm in Pennsylvania and it's just BFL, like a really nice, very lustrous fingering white BFL um, and a natural kind of oatmeal-y color. And this is uh, the jumper. It is called Cloudsly by Isabel Kramer and it has a fun texture pattern on the back. Um, so this is a pretty woolly wool. It's like soft cause it's BFL, but it's definitely woolly. Um, and I, so I unraveled the sleeve because they were actually too narrow as well. So I unraveled the sleeve to like the point where I was like, okay, this is the width that I want on the first one you can see here. And then you can really see where I unraveled and re-knit because it looks like ramen, but I'm going to block it again and it will look fine. Um, and then I knitted a little bit of a longer cuff here and the same thing. And so I, I started in again on this, on this one. Um, just, it's not done yet, but I know what I have to do in terms of like the number, like I basically knit till I'm done with the yarn and then I knit 
20 more rounds and then I do a cuff um, from this because the sleeves had been initially the exact same length. So that's helpful. Um, so yeah, it'll be, you know, fine. And um, I have some markers to make sure that I can count my rounds. Um, so this is again, like, this is like an evening's work. <laughs> I might do it tonight. I'm going to watch a Spider-Man movie. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring this. I haven't decided. There's, I need to be productive on several projects and I haven't decided which one. Um, but maybe this is a contender. Again, it's going to be done. It's going to go back into my collection and, and we'll be, we'll be on our merry way. Um, but yeah, I would love for anybody to join in this project if they want. Um, this is, <laughs> tell me you've ever lived in Philadelphia without telling me you've lived in Philadelphia. You have a Wawa tote bag <laughs> or New Jersey or Delaware. Wawa is, if you don't know, Wawa is a, it's like a gas station convenience store chain. Um, in like New Jersey, Delaware, Philadelphia. There's like some in Northern Maryland um, and it's very famous. It's like where you go to get a hoagie at midnight um, because a lot of them are open for 24 hours. Um, anyway, it's like a, it's like the place everyone goes. Okay, the last thing that is like, I've been really working on this um, is my Inclinations Cowl by Andrea Mowry. This is in hand spun, so lots of fun hand spun. There we go, um, action going on here. I have a skein of hand spun John Urban. I think this is Harvest Hues and Blue Spruce. So it's like Merino blended with a Swart Blaze, which is black and the Merino is dyed like a light teal. This was the first skein I ever spun on my electric spinner, my EEW6 electric eel wheel 6.0. I really like that spinner. If you're interested in getting into spinning and you don't have the space or the budget to buy like a wheel or you're not sure if you want to spend that much money or have something take up that much space in your house, um, I would recommend trying the electric eel wheel because it's not very expensive compared to like a serious spinning wheel. Um, they run about $300 and you, um, yeah, it doesn't take up very much space. It's portable. I really like it. I've been gravitating towards that more than my wheel a lot in the past few months, just because it's, I can do it on the couch and not have to like sit up and treadle. Um, so this is the first one. And then this is just like a fractal combo spin of a bunch of stuff, which is the color changing yarn you can see in the cowl. So I'm alternating so that one row is, um, like the teal and then one row is the barber pole. And I think I'm going to run out of this. As you can see, it's much smaller. That's because I spun this to a much thicker weight. Um, they, these weighed the same, but this one was just thicker. It was more of a sport DK and this is more of a fingering weight. So I'm spinning another one of just like teals and greens that are in my stash and I don't care if they match, like it'll look fine. <laughs> um, it'll be great. So I'm excited about that. That'll be nice. Um, yeah, just kind of getting through that. I actually have another top that I was knitting um, out of hand spun that I ran out of yarn for <laughs> like halfway down the body. So I got another bump of fiber from the um, supplier and I am. Um, I'm gonna spin that as well next to then be able to finish that top. It's red, it's really fun. Um, but again, finishing projects as much as I can. Right now, even my spinning projects are just finishing projects because I'm trying to spin more of something to then finish the knit. Okay, but I am, you know, as I'm sure many viewers know, I love Fair Isle knitting and I want to knit some Fair Isle this summer. Um, I don't, I'm already working on my set of stall cardigan, which I would show you, except I haven't really made any progress on it in like the last month. Um, Cause I joined, right, I split off the, I made the sleeve steaks and then I um, knitted a bit and then I realized I had wanted to rip back and put like a couple more bands in and then I didn't center the pattern and I'm like, this would not take long to fix, but I don't really want to sit down and like give the mental capacity to this to fix it right now because it's one of those things and I'm like, you know, trying to be more forgiving of myself for that and like letting that sit till I'm like, okay, I have like an entire Saturday morning and I'm ready to get back into this project and like really start working on it again. Um, but I would like to knit a couple of like Fair Isle hats or something this summer because they go quick and it's fun to play with colors. Um, and again, they're not very big so they don't like sit heavily on your lap. So I'm gonna make the Bug of Floor beanie, which I'm sure many of you have seen the pattern for. Um, it's from the Shetland Wool Week pattern of the year um, and you can get lots of kits for it at the Woolly Thistle. So you, if you don't want to put together your own colors, which is what I'm about to show you how I did, um, you can get a pre pre planned color scheme from the Woolly Thistle. They've put a bunch together for you. But um, if you haven't seen the Bug of Floor Beanie, um, you should check it out because it's really cute and it's, it's um, got flowers on it. It's designed by Allison Rendell um, and then there's some zigzags around the flower motif and then there's some 
more flowers up at the crown and then it closes. So you can do it in like two colors or you can do it in like, I'm gonna do it in six. So I have one background color, which is Rama Lemelgarn in color 12. I have a bunch of these and I really like this color as like a kind of cool neutral. I feel like I have a lot of Jameson and Smith Supreme jumper weight colors that are like really warm neutrals. They have a gray in Jameson and Smith Supreme, but it's kind of a darker gray. It's not like a light gray and all the other ones are like in the brown family, not in the gray family. So I like this Rama Lamel Garn in color 12 for a kind of cooler tone because I wanted to do this with blues. And the um, version of the hat that really inspired me to pick my colors was the one that it's a, it has a black background, three different shades of gray for the flowers and one um, pop of pink in the middle and then it has some like purple or something around the outside. Um, so it's pretty monochromatic. There was just a couple of pops of colors. Maybe it was a blue in the middle. I can't remember, but it was monochrome and it had two, it had a big pop in the center, but then it had like another like different color that was a color and not just in the grayscale. Um, anyway, so I decided to do mine with blues, with gray and then these two blues. So these are all Jameson and Smith, two ply jumper weight and three blues. They don't like, they're not super, you know, close together. Like this one's obviously teal. This one's kind of the, this one's a, a quite a bright blue and this one's got like a little bit more gray. So the darkest one here is shade FC41. This one is shade 16. This is the middle one. And then the lightest one is FC15 mix. So these are going to be the flower. And then the inside of the flower is going to be Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift in copper, which is going to go right up against this lightest blue for a pop. Um, I like blue and copper together. Um, I think that the copper really pops without being too bright. I thought about doing like a really bright orange, but I was like, no, I want it to be a little bit more neutral. And then the zigzag along the outside is going to be this Jameson and Smith's Uplay Jumper Weight in 123 mix, which is a nice purple with some kind of magenta and like gray heathering, which I really like. So I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be really fun and it'll probably take like a weekend. Um, if you are new to Fair Isle, I would definitely recommend starting with a hat. Um, it just really helps you kind of get an understanding of your own gauge. The needles you should be using. It's just a hat so you can rip it out if it's too big or too small and just change needle sizes as you go. Um, it's kind of like a big gauge swatch. That's what I would say. Like it's kind of hard to, to gauge swatch Fair Isle because you want to knit it in the round and knitting even if you knit like and carry your yarns you know there's so much color changing that it's just like hard to kind of understand that sometimes. So yeah I would recommend I'm um, starting with a hat and just measure your gauge when you're like a little bit of the way into the motif rip it back and change needle sizes if that's not working for you. Um, do some experimenting, but hat is small. So, I mean, compared to like a big Fair Isle sweater. So yeah, um, you know, practice your color work on small things so that it's not like a huge disappointment if you have to rip it out because it's not gonna fit. Or if it's too small, give it to somebody who's smaller than you. Or if it's too big, give it to someone who's bigger than you, you know, in terms of their head size or whatever <laughs> you're knitting. Um, but yeah, I think that's all for now. Um, so hopefully I finish a lot of projects this summer. I will update you with my progress next month. Um, and if you want to join me, you know, feel free. Know that I will be with you in solidarity. Um, you know, comment in the comments, leave in the comments what project or projects you're trying to finish. Um, you know, accountability is great. So um, I hope that everyone's having a fantastic start to their summer. It's crazy that it's June already. Uh, and I hope everyone's staying safe from the wildfire air if you're anywhere on the East Coast or wherever you are that you're staying safe um, and you're not like overheating or anything or it's not like really unseasonably cold or something because it's summer. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's having a great June. So I'll see you next month. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you, Emma, for sharing your whips with us and uh, yeah, showing us all that you've got going on. Yeah, I'm glad to know I'm not the only one who occasionally just has these moments where you've got to be like, okay, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to clear the needles. Well, um, we're doing that this month with call your nets anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to? So, yeah, I was going to say, so we, we've titled it call your nets. Do you want to explain what calling is? So calling is what um, our friend Rachel would do on the hill in the Fair Isle, which, you know, they're bringing in the flock that is out on the hills. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, a couple episodes ago, we had mentioned the idea of going through all our project bags, cleaning them out, putting needles back where they belong, extra yarn back in the stash or wherever you put your yes. remaining yarn. It's um, cathartic. It will be good for us. It is. It's kind of good to have a, I know we're near at the end of spring, but a good to have a nice spring tidying of all the project bags. Yes. So um, I'm going to try and get some footage of me doing this at home. 
Um, <laughs> me too. So in moving the things around with the loom, um, I've been forced to look in the massive closet in my bedroom, which is just piled high with bags of yarn mm -hmm. and projects that I forgot I had. So yeah. I will be calling my knits as well. Um, and I think this is a good exercise and yeah. it'll be great to get organized. Yeah. So um, if you're doing, if you're joining us and calling your knits, um, there's no hard and fast rules or anything. It's just tidying, bringing things out, tidying up yep. um, and getting things in order yep. to however you want them. Yes. To it's just, you know, getting um, your needles all put back and organized, yeah. um, getting things off the needles if they are just not going to move forward, you know, kind of call it. Yeah. And, uh, or, you know, get or your, finish it up. Or finish it, get your whips organized so you know yeah. what you're doing. It's just a tidy up. It's a bit of a spring clean. And, yeah. Um, For me, my knitting books, I've got quite a few, like, right. knitting books, and they tend to, like, yeah. get put all over because I'll be like, oh, I want to look through that. Yeah. Um, and so I have a bunch of tidying that has to happen. So yes. I will. I will try and get some footage of that. Yes. Um, we may have to speed through some of it because there's quite a bit. Um, so, okay. Well, so call your knits and take photos, video, whatever. Uh, let us let us yeah. see what you're doing. And because you might, we might help each other feel better with the amounts that we actually have. Yeah. yeah. Or we might feel morally superior because, you know, we don't need to do that. That's fine. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> and I think too, like, I, I know I usually have multiple whips going. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't stress me out. Um, so we always encourage you to do what is best for you and how you like to Absolutely. Work. I have um, to say, though, you know, um, Emma gives me shivers at the thought of having 15 whips on the go. That's a lot for me. Like, I, I think, and when she said monogamous with two or three, <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Opposite of monogamy. <laughs> I think too like I do tend to have a couple going yeah um but I am currently like so I'm trying not to cast on another sweater even though I have sweateritis and really want to um <laughs> I want to take some time to think about what I want to be knitting on next I know I want to do the Latvian mittens yeah I have my kit for that mm -hmm. and I think I do want to knit a summer tea and a, probably the violet tea by Jessica and um how do we say it? Sauna? Sauna. Sauna. And um, and I don't know what else after that, but yeah. nice, quick, summery nets. Probably socks. Like. Socks. We have lots to talk about socks. Mm -hmm. Should we go to Kelsey first and yeah. see what Kelsey's talking about? Uh, she's actually doing some crochet. Yeah. Which looks fun. Mm -hmm. um, and when we come back, we will announce another winner. We'll talk about socks and what else we've got to talk about. So go watch Kelsey and come on back. Hi everyone, Kelsey here coming in just to talk to you a little bit about some projects I've been working on, um, some things I've been thinking about, and just some general nitty wooly goodness. And actually I shouldn't say nitty because my first thing is crochet. But, so this is my first thing that I wanted to show you. And it's big, so I'm gonna back up. Look at this basket! Oh. So this basket is crocheted. It's crocheted on an M hook, so a nine millimeter hook, which is actually quite big, which I'm a fan of because I'm not, I'm not the best crocheterist in the world. Um, and this just makes it go super fast. So what this is, is a, it's all my scraps. So if you're like me, I keep all the ends of all my projects, whether it's four grams or 40 grams or whatever, I keep all the little balls. Um, and this is, made with those balls all held together. So this in different spots because because of the thicknesses of the yarn is somewhere between five and eight strands. Um, I used everything from light fingering through to Aran weight yarns. Um, if you see a, a pretty prominent stripe, it's probably because there's a thicker yarn. So like this orange was a thicker yarn. Um, there's sort of a cream or th cream colored thicker yarn in here. It just has a more prominent effect because it's thicker. So what you do is you start, this is a free, I made it from a free pattern that I found on Ravelry, but there's actually a ton of these kinds of free patterns. So I'm not, not shy about talking about it. You cast on in the middle here. Do you cast on for crocheting? Whatever, you start in the middle here and you start crocheting in a flat circle, which my circle is not terribly flat, but it's fine. It's the bottom of the basket. Um, I actually started out with like slightly thinner amounts of yarn held together, which is why it's a little floppier. I would do it thicker uh, if I did it again. And actually I, I am doing it again. <laughs> so I am working on another one so I can show you that one in a second. Um, but you start here and in the first round you single crochet twice into every stitch and then 
the next round you single crochet once and then twice into the next and then once and then twice into the next and then you continue that so in this in the next round it's crochet tw single crochet into two and then twice into the next um, and that makes your your circle grow at a, at a rate that makes sense and hopefully makes it be flat which it didn't quite do for me but that's probably because I was not counting the most accurately anyway it doesn't really matter um, so this used up a ton of scraps because crochet basically eats yarn oh you can see here here's my tail that I ended with and I think that's seven uh, seven different strands of all kinds of things actually here's Mungo from my green sweater here's a piece of that um, there's some other ones in there that are there's strict guard anyway so you hold all these together and you crochet them all as one big fat strand and that gives you this really nice stiff um, fabric has a nice structure all of my ends if you can see them are on the inside and I will I will trim them I haven't yet but they're just knotted together they're just square knots because each time one ends there's so many other strands reinforcing it that it doesn't if it pulls out a little bit it probably doesn't matter and because this is mostly wool there's actually a little bit of cotton and some other stuff in here um, it's the same as a sweater it, it won't really pull out unless it's pulled on which I don't intend to do so I will be the so you intentionally pull all of your knots and your tails to the inside and then I will cut them all off I'll probably leave a little bit so they don't pull out but it doesn't matter because it's the inside of the basket. Um, it also has these handles. So there's one on each side. And that's just chaining across, starting again, and then on the next round, crocheting into the chain. You make your little handle. So I've got my two handles on my two sides. And I think it's very cool. I've used up quite, I had baskets of these little scraps and I always thought oh I'm going to use them for color work I'm going to use them in projects I'm going to use them for stripes or stripey socks or all these things and all those are wonderful projects but this is such a functional item and it's so satisfying I started I actually started this last Saturday and it took me like three days of not doing it that many hours a day like one or two hours a day it's very 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 fast because again big fat hook big fat yarn nice structured basket. Anyway, that's just an idea that I wanted to share that I've had a lot of fun with. And I've had a lot of fun to the extent that here's the second one. This one I'm making much smaller. You can see how it's already kind of curving up. Um, because when you stop doing your increases for the bottom, you just single crochet and rounds all the way around and it naturally forms the basket shape. Um, so it'll end up being about that big which is still sizable, maybe 10 inches, 12 inches, um, but it's not the sort of 16 that the other one is. Um, and yeah, I'm just literally working with, whoops, all these little, all these ends, pulling them through, using up my balls and scraps and bits. And uh, yeah, it's been really good. I'm from real, like this is how big this hook is. That's an M, it's gigantic. Um, so yeah, I think it's wonderful. I think it's really fun. Um, I'm not really into crochet, and this is a very simple, very, very simple crochet project um, that you can't really mess up. Even if you sort of miscount on the bottom, then you kind of fix it and you move on. Um, so I just wanted to share that as something that I've been having some fun with with all my, my scrappy bits. The other thing I wanted to talk about or just show you for a second is my, this sweater. Oops. So it's really, it's really coming along, I think, and it's unfortunate that it's so dark in here, but I'm still continuing with my two, two color marl with greens and blues. This is the whole body. And then I've been doing the sleeve. Um, and it's been great. It's a saddle shoulder construction, as I've, um, I've mentioned before. And you just pick up, you knit the body, and then you pick up these sleeves. So this is, it looks like a sewn set in sleeve, but you're never sewing. It's, it's seamless from the top down. Um, so that's been a lot of fun to be knitting on. I still have a ways to go, but I've actually been taking little breaks here and there to be doing other projects, to be doing that crochet bad, those crochet baskets, um, and just kind of going from there. So yeah, big fan of this. It's from Ann Bud's um, handy book, The Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. 
Um, I can't recommend it enough. It's been really fun and you really are in control of exactly your dimensions and exactly the sizes and your how big you need your sleeves to be, how long you need anything to be. Um, and you just knit with whatever yarn you like and find the gauge in the book and it's been it's been really fun. Um, at this point I'm not feeling any pressure to finish it because it is effectively a worsted weight sweater because it's two strands of fennel garn together so it's kind of like if it kind of like one strand of vams so it's it's more like a worsted to Aran weight um, so I'm not concerned about finishing it right now because I'm thinking about summer things thinking about summer knits summer shirts summer tank tops summer shawls I'm not a huge cotton knitter um, I have knit with cotton I've knit with cotton linen blends before um, I'm just not it's just not my favorite thing so I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts I've had about how to knit with wool yarns for lighter weight or more breathable or summer-ish garments. So a couple of things spring to mind. First, you definitely can wear wool in the summer. It sounds crazy, but wool has some great antimicrobial properties. It has moisture wicking properties. This is why you see all sorts of like um, merino wool leggings or merino wool like camisole tank tops that are made of a, like very, very thin yarn, um, but generally knit and generally 100% um, or close to 100% merino. Some of them have some, you know, elastic or, or nylon or other things in it. But it's because of those natural properties of wool that you can be doing some of those things with commercial fabrics. And you, you can't really knit those fabrics by hand because those they're so so thin that it would just it wouldn't be worth it, it would take a million years um, and it just wouldn't be a great idea but you can sort of mimic that in a few ways the first way would be to knit with a yarn that is worsted spun um, woolen spun yarns tend to be fluffier like I can show you this is a worsted a woolen spun yarn that is it's pretty poofy it's pretty thick um, especially for its weight, it's pretty lightweight. Um, but what that means is it is a bit fuzzy or feeling on your skin. Um, so it like feels a bit more like sheep fleece, if that makes sense, like more like touching a sheep. Um, where a worsted spun yarn will be a lot smoother. So a, a smoother worsted spun yarn, all of their fibers have been combed in a, in a single direction. So it makes it a lot smoother and a lot less of that fuzzy feel. Um, and that can actually make a huge difference when you're wearing wool in the summer. If it's a worsted weight, or not worsted weight, worsted spun, and it's smoother like that, it's not going to be as sort of wooly feeling on your body. Um, relatedly, superwash wools can feel a little bit like that, but then you also lose some of the moisture wicking properties. You lose some of the sort of wooly... Um, antimicrobial properties, um, superwash wools tend to get a little bit, you have to wash them because they just aren't, they've been stripped of their natural oils that, uh, that, uh, that provide the ability to do some of those natural functions. Um, but they are much smoother. So if it's something that you don't mind washing in the, you know, in the washing machine or by hand uh, more often, that's something that can also be knit well in the summer is, is a worsted spun yarn that is non superwash or any superwash yarn because um, they are a bit smoother on the outside. The other thing is to knit at a loose gauge. So knitting at a, you know, you look at a yarn ball and it says 22 stitches is the recommended gauge. If for a summer weight pattern, I might be looking at knitting something that's 22, more at like 15 or 16, something that's really loose for that gauge or for that yarn, a loose gauge for the yarn, um, because that'll just naturally make it more breathable. It'll have bigger holes. There'll be more air in between the stitches. Um, so that's another thing. You can you can always take something. It'll, it'll likely be a little more um, transparent. So maybe it's something you wear a tank top underneath, or maybe you don't care and you wear it anyway, and then that's fantastic. It's just something to be aware of. Um, so you could knit a lot of our um, fingering weight wools um, at more like a DK gauge or so and that will really work um, even but even you get up into sport weight wools you you know, knit them up at an errand weight you can knit something at 14 um, 
The ranunculus sweater is, I believe, a 14 stitch gauge. And if you use a lightweight wool, that would absolutely be suitable for the summer or at least most of the summer. I'm not gonna vouch for like 100 degrees and 100% humidity or something like that. But you know, when it's 70, 75, 80 degrees, I think you, especially short sleeve or sleeveless, I think you can get away with a lot of, a lot of different wool um, if you just knit at a loose gauge and with a smoother wool. Um, so yeah, that's just a couple thoughts I had about summer knitting and uh, hope you are enjoying planning your summer projects and enjoying your podcast. Thanks. So thank you, Kelsey. That was fascinating. I've actually crocheted little tiny bowls mm -hmm. with, with that same sort of idea, yeah. but I loved her big basket. Yeah. yeah. I, I knit a similar basket. It was a little bit smaller. You but, knitted it? Or I'm sorry. I crocheted it. Um, it's okay. Um, it's okay. So I crocheted a basket for my sister a few years ago yeah. for Christmas. So we always do a handmade Christmas. Nice. Um, but I just no pressure. used some. Um, <laughs> great. Um, uh, I just used some uh, acrylic yarn <laughs> that I have going um, to just try and move it out, and that way it's easy to clean for her. I hadn't thought to do different weights, and multiple scraps. strands. Yeah. Yeah. That oh. I did multiple strands, but I hadn't thought to different do weights. like different weights. I, the multiple strands was pretty ingenious. For yeah. me, I was like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Because I do, I save all my scraps. I'm all, you know, color work. I'm always knitting with two ply or fingering weight or maybe sport weight. That's definitely where I, but if you could put them all together and just mm -hmm. boom, have that. Right. right. We're going to announce the winner right after we talk about what's new in the shop. Nice and succinctly, Maggie, right? Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Uh, John Arbin. John Arbin. So we've had a lovely top up of Ooh. both Devonia and Yarnadelic. <gasps> Mmm, yes, Devonia and Yarnadelic. So let's talk about these two. John Arbin is a mill, a worsted spun mill, uh, independently owned by John Arbin, although he I recently think. retired, but has passed on the mill to, I believe, staff members, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because they're keeping up the tradition of what they do there. And Devonia is a beautiful, um, lustrous yarn, um, worsted spun, of course, all their yarn is. And this has 50% Exmoor blue face, 30% Blue Face Lester and 20% Wensleydale, which gives it that drape. So really good for shawls mm -hmm. and um, oh, I knit, anything, a, I knit really. a sweater out of it. And it's which sweater really did you knit? wonderful. I used the Ann Bud's um, top oh, yeah. down book. I almost wore it today, but this is going to be too hot. Um, but it is. it was really lovely. It's, it's so nice to the hand too, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, I started my ranunculus. Uh, vintage viewers will remember the ridiculous ranunculus. Yes, so it's, it's, you it's, did it in this color. Yes, and it's in time out. That's one of the things I'm going to find when I call my... And I've there been thinking go. about it and getting it maybe going again because I just was making such stupid mistakes. It was ridiculous. So anyway... Now that you've conquered lace, it's a good time to rip out and start again. Conquered lace might be a little... No, no, the, uh... conquered it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm enjoying it's it. It's about mindset. <laughs> So much of life is, though, don't you find? Yes. Oh, my gosh. We I have... think sauna would look great for a ranunculus. Yes, it would. Just going to throw that out there. Yes, it would. It would look, it would look woolly and fluffy short, and light. Short, ranunculus. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I know. I know. I don't know why I'm doing this, except that I, I love the feeling of all this yarn. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. So we have Devonia, mm -hmm. and we have Yarnadelic. Yes, Yarnadelic. Um, I, I love all things John Arbin. I love the heathering. I love the colors. Um. I find I've personally been very attracted to Corydale lately. Um, all my spinning has been Corydale. Um, and Yarnadelic is 100% fog on Corydale. Um, uh, it is wonderful. Yeah. Um, it's It's got a lovely hand. It's soft. It's woolly. Um, yeah. So there's just so many gorgeous colors. Which is fascinating because I was just watching Margaret Thatcher taking Britain to war over those Falkland Islands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was very eye-opening for me because I'm going to fully admit I had no idea where no. the Falkland Islands oh, were yeah. located. Yeah. And I was like, you are where? Off the tip of Argentina somewhere. Yeah. yeah. No, that yeah. was a big war that uh, Britain uh, definitely got into. <laughs> yeah. um, but the way they blend their colors is really Lovely. beautiful. Yes. Um, so yes. yes. All uh, of these are available in the shop now. Yeah, this, this feels Lovely. It feels wonderful. So if you're looking for, I know we had a comment on the last video um, of somebody asking us to sort of not yes. rank, but talk about yarns from softness um, to um, more coarse or rustic. Yes, I would um, go ahead. And so I think if you're looking for a yarn that is sort of a, a next step from Merino, 
um, moving into the rustic realm yeah, where we love. Like, like this is very much not. This is at not all rustic. rustic. Very easily, you could wear this next to skin. And like, that that's a function of the worsted spinning. I, I on top think. of Corey Dale, I think being sure. like a um, I think it's a medium wool. Um, it's a little bit stronger than merino. Yeah. Um, but it's not at all. But I think the um, the worst is spinning of it. You know, organizes all the fibers, puts them all in alignment, and so you don't have. Like, you do get a smoother. Yarn. You get a smoother yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not going to prickle you um, if that's what you're afraid of. Yeah. Uh, none of this is super washed. Nope. It's all natural. Yeah. So check these out if that is of interest to you. We just mm -hmm. got stocked up after a long time of not having it, so we're yeah. very happy to have it. Yeah. Back here. Okay. Wonderful. Maggie, we want to talk about our sock sprint, which yes. comes in July. Mm -hmm. And do we have dates for that? We do. Um, we'll put them here on the screen because I don't remember them off the top of my head. We're a little crinkly. Yeah. But I do believe do Danielle um, of Old World Knits, I think it's her handle. Oh, she actually said the, she appreciated the ASMR and a little bit of crinkling. <laughs> so there you go. Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. So we have the sock cow coming up or the sock sprints. So there's mm -hmm. the dates. Come knit a pair of socks with us. It is a personal challenge to knit a pair of socks in two weeks. Some of you will fly through and knit several pairs, maybe. <laughs> and the rest of us may not even finish a pair. But it's a personal summer sprint challenge, mm -hmm. which is very exciting. Yeah. And so we will be supporting the sock sprint, of course, with our sock bags. And we have last year's sock bag to show you, which is just delightful. And uh, we have another one, another artist render, uh, rendering of Joy, our knitter, uh, hanging up her socks. So we have a new one coming. We'll put a picture of it here. It's actually in production. Uh, as we're recording this, it will be um, either on its way or here uh, when you see this on Friday. So we are calling this a pre-order. Uh, but it'll be very quick when we send yeah, it out. Yeah, it shouldn't out. be on pre-order very long. But since the totes aren't here quite yet, um, we want to factor that in. Yeah. Yes. So, um, but we will ship. We will start shipping out because these bags are already made. It won't take long to just add the bag yeah. and ship it out to you. Yeah. So, Maggie, do you want to show um, your choice of? Um, I do. Yarn sure. in this yeah. bag. So, so this bag um, features one skein of Rambler, um, which is at the top. Mm -hmm. um, it has one skein of Mondine by Retrosaria. Yep. Three skeins of Rama Vandre. Yeah, which um, is the so thicker soft yarn. Yeah, so you get um, two for a main color and one for a contrast color. And then one skein of a new yarn from Biche Bouche, which is Le Sock. Le Sock. Had to, um, had to include that. So, um, mm -hmm. And it's a brand new sock yarn. So we, we're very yeah. excited to include that. And this is just one example of the colorways. Right. One, so we will be choosing the colorways of your bag as per usual, which is what we do. But you get to know what yarns mm -hmm. are in the bag. So that's one bag. Yeah. And the other bag I have here is wonderful. It's got a skein of Rambler, which is our very own yarn. It has two 50 gram skeins of John Arbin's Exmoor Sock Yarn. It has three skeins of Gamel Zeri, which is Rama's Sock Yarn, and a skein of West Yorkshire Spinners. Mm -hmm. So how much yarn are they getting? I think they're getting a ton. They are getting a, a ton, yeah. We were able to reduce the price across the board to $99.95. Last year was over 110 yeah. So, yes. The other thing not pictured, but that is on its way, is you're going to get a printed pattern for a Rama pattern. Um, the Gamel Seri bag, the pattern is for Gamel Seri, and the bag that has Vondra, the pattern is for Vondra. Yes, so and there'll also be a pattern suggestion card, which is always very popular in mm -hmm. these bags. We, we go through a bunch of patterns and suggest for the yarn included in the bag what a good pattern would be. And some of them are free and some of them are purchased. And yeah. yeah. So um, do you have another sample to show? I do. So this is another variation of the bag that includes um, Rama Vandre, Rambler, um, Retro Zaria Mandim, and um, Biche Bouche Le, Le Sock. Yeah. So you can see all of the Biche Bouche Le Sock um, yarns are marled. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're quite li lovely. They're loosely spun, but they're, they're designed and made specifically for socks. So yes. they will hold up. So um, you might uh, knit with, with these on a on a smaller needle just to get that tight fabric. Yeah, and they are an 80-20 wool nylon. They have nylon in them. Um, and then as you can see, this Mondim is a solid color. 
Um, so the bag is going to be mixtures of either speckled or solid. Okay. All right. And then another sample of the other bag. We have a skein of uh, Rambler here, which is lovely. Two skeins of John Arbin's Exmoor. A lovely um, ball of West Yorkshire spinners. Look at those colors. Mm -hmm. And then three of um, Gamelzeri by Rama. Yeah. So you're getting an awful lot of yarn for your $99. You'll be set up for sock knitting for quite a while, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't have to knit socks with sock yarn. You no. can knit shawls, uh, things like that. But, you know, the point I've is I've seen this. quite a few um, projects, too, where people are using either the speckled Mondeem or the self-striping West Yorkshire spinners. But the, they use that in... Um, different shawls and in different as the multicolored yarn and right. it is absolutely amazing are you talking about color work um no where they'll well where they have like a shawl that uses two colors mm -hmm. and either it's mosaics which i guess is color work where they use that as the color changing gotcha. yarn, and it just really yeah works. so if you're not a fan it's just a fingering weight yeah yarn um so great for socks but um can use it for lots of things so these are going on sale uh today um, maybe on sale by the time you're watching this actually. So run over to the shop, get your annual sock bag. Uh, we're really happy with these. Extremely excited to be able to offer uh, two different ones. And the reason we're doing that is, you know, these yarns are limited. We can't just get a ton of them. Mm -hmm. So we went with what we could get and have made two bags. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to see the actual um, printed bag that will go with this. Yeah um yeah and your printed card and your free pattern uh of gamelzeri or vandre uh yeah they're really cute too they are really yeah. cute so yeah so that's coming today maggie what else what else do we want to give a little sneak peek oh my keep, god i keep kind of holding it up I um know. so we're, we're recording on a monday and um we came into this lovely surprise on our desks um yeah. And we don't have a date yet. You have to get on our newsletter to know when these are coming. But they are Woolly Mammoth Hearth Sock Sets. Um, so it is her natural undyed hearth sock yarn with a little dyed mini. How cute. And how. I know. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Wonderful. So this is, um, let's see, 120 grams all in of four ply of 50% Jacob, 50% BFL. Sourced, spun, and made in the UK, dyed in Northern Ireland by Willie Mammoth. Yeah. It's so great to be able to work with Emma. Of She's the Willie. delightful. She really is. And so very, very limited. Can't stress that enough. Yeah. And like Maggie said, if you're on our newsletter email, you yeah. will be you will be the one learning when this goes on sale. Yeah. Um, but we do expect this to be crazy. <laughs> Because, we do because they're, they're just by nature they're very limited yes but also highly sought after yes so so absolutely beautiful good reason <laughs> i know it's magnificent magnificent Wonderful. stuff yeah and there are a different assortment like i said we just got these in but we're really excited so get on our newsletter yep. if you want details about yeah for sure for sure i just want to um give an honorable mention to the rama six uh, summer six packs they oh, yeah. <laughs> they have been selling really really well um they're still available so. if you're looking to enhance your color work stash the rama summer six packs are a great way to do that you get a variety of colors that all work really well together mm -hmm. um there's also enough yardage where we've seen a couple people knit whole shawls yeah just using the coordinating colors from yep. their summer six packs yeah so. so they're a deal you get six for the price of five right now which is a great great deal and um those will be going away soon probably but yeah. they're still there as of today mm -hmm. um and is there anything else we want to mention um i think that's a lot that is a lot um and there's always plenty of good things going on in the shop get on our newsletter yes um, the newsletter and... is the best way to um be in touch and hear what's coming through the shop um yeah. at the time or, or ahead of time yeah. we do our best with this but you know we get chatting and yeah <laughs> We always like, oh darn it, we meant to mention blah blah blah, yeah. and then you know, so we do that. We we'd rather be chatty. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think uh, shall we let Kim take us away? Definitely. So stand up, get your shoulders moving. It doesn't take long, and it really does feel good. So Kim, thank you so much for your contribution, and I think all that's left to say, Maggie, is if you go out, take your knitting. Bye bye. Hi.
I thought we'd do yoga today in front of the garden and greenhouse, seeing as this is where I spend most of my time these days. So it's so important to take breaks and move our bodies so that we, when we're working hard, like out there, so that we can go inside later and to do what we love, to decompress and relax. So today's class is all about what to do during that break. Um, in this case, we're going to be focusing primarily on the shoulders. So, actually, I'll just show you what's going on here quick. If you can see them. There they are. There's the chickens doing their thing. And there's Tilly doing her thing, making sure the chickens are okay. <laughs> fun. It's so fun being outside these days. But it's hard work, right? So we don't want to be sore. We want to have a break. We want to take care of our body so that we can keep doing what we love. So this is how it's going to go today. Stand in mountain pose. Let me kick my shoes off and have a little time with the earth at the same time. Are you going to help Tilly? Yeah. Okay. So my shoes are off. Standing on the clover and the grass. It feels so good. And we're just going to start circling one arm and then the other. You can choose a big circle like this or a little circle depending on how your shoulders are feeling. Everybody's range of motion is different and you don't have to do what you think anyone else is doing. You just do what's available to you today. So big or small circles and engage the core. Engage those core muscles. So you're doing your back crawl and you're squeezing those muscles, you're cinching your corset up so that you're not wiggling all over the place, right? You're in control and the abs are engaged, which is really good awareness to have because at other times, many other times in our day, we do need to be engaging our core to protect our spine. Let's take our arms in the opposite direction now. Hi, Tim. She sees hands and she thinks that means She's going to get a pet. <laughs> you should be watching the chickens. Mm -hmm. Good. So we're opening that shoulder joint. We're definitely taking an assessment of where we're sore and what needs a little more stretching. And we're warming it up. Perfect. So just come back to your mountain pose now and stand here. Eyes closed and just notice how the arms and shoulders feel. What is the sensation down your arms and into your hands? Good. Now inhale the arms all the way up. Exhale them down into goal pose. We're squeezing the shoulders together. We'll just breathe a bit here and notice it. So the shoulders are opening a bit here, but the shoulder blades are being moved together, squeezed together. So we're getting a big opening through the front of the chest. On your next inhalation, bring the arms up again. And then exhale, I'm just gonna turn so you can see, you'll interlace the fingers behind your back, just like that. So we have a nice rotation through the shoulders and we're rolling, externally rotating the arms out to open through the chest. Alrighty, on your next inhalation, you're gonna lift the arms up as much as they'll go. Doesn't have to be a big movement. And then bend the knees Exhale, fold forward, and imagine you have a friend right behind you, pulling your arms up and away, lifting you up and getting a beautiful stretch through the chest. Release the head, let the neck relax. And then with the knees still bent, you're going to inhale all the way up, release the arms, and bring them above your head. Take the arms down to your sides. So now look like a capital T. Take another big inhalation here. And then we're gonna swing the left arm underneath our right. Squeeze, wrap, and lift. Now we've got the opposite thing going on. Our shoulder blades are pulling apart from each other. Just breathe into it. And you know, you breathe 360 degrees because your ribs go all the way around your torso. And so when you breathe in, imagine your ribs are expanding, not just through your chest, 
but along your sides and along your back because they are. On your next exhalation, we'll open the arms out to the sides. And this time it'll be left arm under right. Whoops, right arm under left. <laughs> Did you catch that? Lift and stretch. I have one student who swears that when she feels a migraine coming, if she does the stretch, she can stop that migraine because it obviously is coming up from tension in her back. So if that's you, this might be helpful. Awesome. Release it. Come back to mountain pose. And let's see if we can speed it up a little bit so that we're moving with our breath. Let's start with some circles. Let's do um, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Close your eyes and make it meditative. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the goal post. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, clasp them behind your back. Inhale, the arms up and the knees. Exhale, fold forward, reach the arms up. Inhale, release, bring the arms all the way up overhead. And exhale them to your sides. Inhale, left under right. Exhale out to the sides. Inhale, right under left. Exhale out to the sides and then release them down. Good. So that is a wonderful way to take a break. I hope that you enjoyed your practice with me today and that no matter what you do during the day, whether it's out in a place like this, or it's typing at a keyboard, or it's playing with grandkids, or whatever it is, at the end of the day, after you do your yoga break, <laughs> your reset, you can enjoy some wonderful knitting and feel good. So until next time, namaste.